style. Look at that. <laughs> Hey there, everybody. How are you? Welcome into the ESPN Julie, FC studios. You didn't Groucho. see my... You look great. Your mark's gone over there. What, what you, what, why don't you uh, show everybody? What, what, what was your impression? No, you show what you did. I was just... Let's run. No, you know. You were bent over. Oh, I got a bad back, Stevie. Just look up, look up Groucho your mark. I got a bad back. This is the issue. From carrying the show, some might say. Uh, I'm in here with Stevie. We got Don Hutchison with us as well as we get ready to take your questions uh, off of social media. Oh. No surprise here. First question is a percentage question for Don. Good, I've been about looking right. forward to them. Uh, and it comes from <laughs> Come on, Don. Natum's interior decorator. Obligatory percentage question for Don. What's the percentage chance that Wrexham reached the Premier League in the next five years? Back-to-back oh, wow. -back <laughs> promotions already for Wrexham. Little oh, Stevie, it can't be a zero. I'll give them a... Five. I'll be kind. Ah, I'll give them a five percent chance. Right, no faith in the Hollywood scriptwriters. I mean, you got to you, you got to admit it's pretty impressive. Spent. You got to admit it's pretty impressive what they've done. Yes. Surely, that gives you some confidence that they can continue to, to move this team up. Listen, they're miles away from the Premier League. Miles away. In fact, they're million. Let me put it this way: they're millions away. Would okay. be a better idea. Okay. Millions. Maybe you a don't think these guys have millions? Billion. You don't think these guys have millions or billion? buddies with billions? A billion? I bet they do. Yeah, they make some pretty successful movies, those if guys. If you had a billion, would you spend that on a football team? Yeah, for sure. Yeah, right. But I, you know, I'll be right. that would, um, <laughs> yeah, right. that's, that's more about me. Man, you don't think there's any chance? In five years, you're having a laugh. You that, means, that means they're going to have to have... When they were in the National League, how, how likely would you have said that they'd be in League One in two years? Yeah, good chance. Well, the level of football is not that different from... from. Everybody says the National League is the toughest league to get promoted out of. But it's not, oh, that, different. It's not that different to, this, to the, the, the League Two. It's the same level. It's re it really is, pretty much. Okay. Obviously, the, obviously, there's a little step up, but it's not that big a step up. Now, right. now, now you're starting to take a step up. No. Okay. All right, so... What's like a reasonable expectation then for a year one in League One? Stay just in the to league. Stay up, just to stay, stay up. up. Okay. Hmm. All right. Absolutely. Fair enough. Stevie, money aside, if you could bring any player in the world other than Mbappe or Holland to Liverpool, who would it be? Any player. Any player. What's your biggest need today? Let's start there. Well, the fact that the fact that Salah is going to be gone, mm -hmm. whether it's this year or next year, that's what you got to do. Osimhen, I think Osimhen would be fantastic for Liverpool. Wow. Yeah. It's the one guy in the world you should sign. Well, the middle of the parks. We've just we've just seen McAllister in, in slob as I. Mm -hmm. I mean, Endo's turned out to be incredible. It's just what you need, you know. You need somebody who's going to run around all day, tackle people, get the ball, and give it to McAllister, Slobber's life, or Salah, or, or whoever. What does that mean for uh, Nunez? Is he starting out wide then? I think he's starting wide. Okay. Yeah, absolutely. Don, what about you with your Liverpool ways? Uh, all the money in the world, other than Mbappe or Holland, who you bring into the club? Jude Bellingham all day long. Mm. He's got charisma. Stevie mentioned run all day, pass all day, score all day. He ticks every single box. Forgot about him. Jude Bellingham <laughs> by a mile. I forgot about him, though. Not a bad shout. Not a bad <laughs> shout. <laughs> you did. Other than Bellingham, awesome. <laughs> For all, is Ange Postacoglu slightly overrated? Easy Absolutely to, Easy not. to ask this now after the 4 Absolutely not. This is the best time to ask it. Then there's no... Then there's there's no being nice or whatever. Okay. Absolutely not. He's not overrated. He's coming He's coming to the league. This is his first year in the league. Mm -hmm. And obviously he wants to play the way he wants to play. And it's attacking and all the rest of it. Eventually he's going to understand that to have some sort of consistency at a certain level, you can't, you can't do it unless you've got the right players. And when I say that, I'm talking about the Liverpool side that won the Premier League and the Champions League who played this open get after it
but they had a back line that wasn't giving anything away. You couldn't get out against them. So, unfortunately, Spurs are never going to spend that amount of money to get in that position. So he's going to have to understand that away from home, you can't just open up and try and just go toe-to-toe -to -toe and outplay not only the opposition, but 50 or 60,000 fans as well. So no, he's not overrated. He took over from two guys that won the Premier League. Won the Champions League. And he's, he's actually put them to shame with the way that, that he's turned the club around. So you, you absolutely cannot say he's overrated. Absolutely not. Don, if he's not overrated, uh, what is the knock on Ange Postacoglu? Uh, I think the knock is that he's very predictable and he's got a plan A and that's it. Um, and the best managers, I think, have different plans for different teams. Guardiola is the best example. You know, he might look like he's playing the same system, but there's there's tiny tweaks that you can spot in game. Um, it might look on paper that he plays a 4-3-3 or a 4-2-3-1 pep, but he doesn't. It's the rotation of players where Tottenham at the minute are a great watch. And it's not a criticism because Stevie's right. And Conte, uh, Conte had a nightmare there. Jose Mourinho had a nightmare there. They were a dull watch. At least when you're paying your money now as a Tottenham fan, you're getting entertained. But there's got to be a different way. They can't just be naive and think they can go into every single game playing off-the-cuff football because that's what they do, Tottenham. They play off-the-cuff football. It's get the ball to the good players. We'll see what they can do on the day. If they play well, they win. If they don't, they'll lose. And that can't be a recipe to try and, especially once you go into the Champions League or get into the Champions League and eventually try and fight for the top one, two, three spots in the Premier League. Off-the-cuff football it does not work. Mm. Fun for the neutral to watch, if nothing else. Don, what's the percentage chance that at least one of the current bottom three survive in the Premier League. So we got Sheffield United and Burnley gone. 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 Uh, then you got Luton on 25, Forrest on 26, yep. Everton 27, and then a little gap to Crystal yep. Palace at 30. So what do you think? I think I think Everton have got two games in hand, so I think they should be fine. Um, I think Palace, Brentford are fine. They've got a massive win today which took them to 32. So one more win, 35, and they'll be safe. I think 34, 35 is the number. But I think it's between Luton, Forest, and Palace. Hmm. But because Palace are on 30, they are nearly there. So I'd give them a 50-50 chance between them and Forest. Wow. I think it's two, two sides vying for one place. I still think Evan will be okay. Who's staying up between those two, Stevie? Forrest or Luton? Going, or do you think it's somebody else that's dropping I'm down? I'm going 60 40, Forrest. To stay up? Yeah. Why is that? Well, Luton, I've got a lot of injuries right now. So, and Luton, it's all about energy and legs. Mm -hmm. It's not so much about ability. And so, when you're depleted, he's not going to be able to make a lot of changes and you're going to have a lot of tired players. Whereas Forrest is the opposite. They've got too many players, but they're going to have legs. Mm. And they just seem to get a point or get a result just when they look as though they're going to drop near that, right into that bottom three. So I, I would go 60-40, Forrest stay up. Got a good point today with uh, Gio Reyna in the starting lineup, did Forrest. Spotty asks, it's obvious that uh, Eric Ten Hag needs to leave. Who is the right person to take over and change the atmosphere in this team? Don, if it's not Eric Ten Hag, who should be in charge of Manchester United? It's not going to be Ten Hag. It will not be Eric Ten Hag. He's been a manager on trial. No wins in four. He's not convincing the hierarchy that he's going to be staying on. He can convince himself, but he won't be staying on. Do you know, I think it might be someone like Southgate, Gareth Southgate. I think the job that he does, trying to work with younger players, moulding a younger team, it's not going to be a quick fix. You could mention any manager and they're going to have their troubles. You know, there's so many players at that football club that needs to be moved on. Anthony Martial, I read in the papers today that he's been moved on. He's not getting a contract extension. They've got the same problems with sort of Rafa Varane coming towards the end of his career. Christian Eriksen at the same time. Uh, Jaden Sancho is not even at the football club. Anthony will probably be sold as well. There's a lot of debate in England over Marcus Rashford. Is he going to move to PSG? Is he going to get out of Manchester? Is it good for him to move? So to answer the question, I think Southgate, but I think they're all going to struggle. 
I asked you last week what your re reaction would be from a Liverpool perspective if Eric Ten Hag, or sorry, if uh, Gareth Southgate was hired by Manchester United. And you were obviously, and I you, said, you had a good laugh. Right? Yes! So what, yes! What would yes! bring about the opposite reaction? If Manchester Uni United hired who? Jurgen Klopp. Well, <laughs> give me a realistic one then. All right. I can't. I don't know. There's, no. They, Manchester United have tried everything since Ferguson right. left. Right. They've tried it. They have tried every single thing. Young manager, old manager, experienced manager. Mm -hmm. I asked my. I mean, the, the, the Premier League experience, not Premier League experience. They've yes. gone through the gamut. Could it be someone like Thomas Frank? Could Thomas Frank energise Man United? I th I think they should go all, all in for Unai Emery and Monchi, who's the sporting director. That's what I'd do. Okay. The biggest United. problem is the players. The but you, problem they got is the players. But you but you've said they need to get a new coach. So Aye. I, So we still gotta figure out who that right guy is, right? Yes. Yeah, you gotta figure it out. But, what do you think, what do you think but, about but, Don shouts there, Unai Emery, Thomas Frank? I mean Unai, Unai Emery absolutely organizes people well, organizes his teams well, mm -hmm. makes sure that everybody does the job. Which is not something you can say about Man United, because you don't really know what job they're all doing. But it's got to start somewhere, and I guess being organised is a good place to start, because they're not even organised. Honestly, Don just went through the lot. Yeah. You can't shift Rashford. He's on about 12 mil a year. He's got another four year in his contract. How are you going to shift Anthony? He spent 100 million on him. Yeah. He's on. Well, if you Huge ship him, you're shipping him for a big loss, yeah. You're carrying Jaden Sancho around on your back. I mean, you're... Uh, you can't move Harry Maguire. He's not going anywhere. He's on too much money as well. I mean... Uh, Casimiro? You can't move Casimiro. And we were talking about the game in the show mm -hmm. that Casimiro can't get around anymore. Well, he can get around anymore, but he's still got another two, maybe more, on his contract. It... it 14 million or something. They're, they're in such a mess. And it's it's going to take more than just a change of manager. But the fact is, the Ten Hag is getting absolutely nothing out of this team. And if your coach is getting nothing from the team, then there's not a reason to keep them. Enough Manchester United. Let's move forward to something more positive. Actually, check that. For Don, how bad are Juventus? Percentage chance of them not qualifying for the Champions League next season, played to a uh, scoreless well, draw against Torino. Yeah, they'll probably make it. They'll probably squeak through. But I think, you know, Stevie there's talked about a managerial change. I think this is the summer where I think Juve have to bite the bullet and, and fire Allegri. He's on something like 14 or 15 million pound a year. Oh. I think it's the last year of his contract. Um, Thiago Motta at Bologna has done an amazing job, so he'll be he'll be getting scouted, I would imagine. Um, De Rossi's done a good job at Roma since he took over from Jose Mourinho. Um, no one talks about Gasparini, and not just because of the result against Liverpool. He's been a brilliant manager for a long time. But I, don't, I, I think they'll still make top four, Juve. I think they'll squeak over the line. But I do not see Max Allegri being their coach next season. Maybe someone like uh, Roberto De Gerbi. He might be linked with them, or he might be thinking of buying, because it looks like Brighton are on the beach. Um, but to answer the question, I think Juve will still make it, but only just. Coaching carousel going to be busy this coming summer. Last one for all. Where do you see Tony, Solanke, and Isaac going? Talking about potential moves for strikers. Don, what do you think? No I know way. you don't want to see Isaac, Isaac going. No. Um, Arsenal being linked with him massively. Arsenal being linked with Tony. I mean, Solanke would be a good replacement for Callum Wilson, in truth. Um, I think it's probably time that Callum Wilson probably moved on because he's a brilliant player when he's fit but just can't seem to stay fit for long periods of time so maybe Solanke Newcastle Tony Arsenal Isak nowhere I thought Isak was uh, really really good today give me those three in order for you yeah I'm a Don Isak's gone nowhere you've got to get him you've got to try and keep him fit mm -hmm. if he can do that he's Fantastic. He's going absolutely no. So, so Solanke, I'm not, I'm not sure season. about Solanke. After today? Yeah. What do you mean? They were playing Man United. <laughs> you said it. You yeah. said it. And, I'm, and, and I don't think Tony fits in at Arsenal. Mm. Tony will go somewhere, absolutely, but I don't know where. 
Chelsea. Did be Chelsea. Chelsea, ooh, right. how about that? Yeah. Lots of big clubs. I like the sound of that. That, that, that sounds a bit right to me. Lots of big clubs yeah. in the market for strikers, and lots of big strikers could be uh, on the move. Should be a very fun summer indeed. That'll do it for this edition of Extra Time. Our thanks to Don and Stevie, and our thanks to you for sending in the questions from social media. We'll be back tomorrow with another brand new edition of ESPN FC. Make sure to join us then as we are all over the Premier League title race, Arsenal and Liverpool both.